Hello, welcome to the virtual hub and welcome to the session host SharePoint framework web part as Microsoft Teams messaging extension. In this session, we will explore the new capabilities of SharePoint framework to host the web part as a Microsoft Teams messaging extension. Myself and Dadeep Nasan, and I am Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services. So before we deep dive into the session, let's have a quick overview of SharePoint framework. So SharePoint framework, commonly known as SPFX, is a page and web part model which provides full support for client-side SharePoint development. It offers easy integration with SharePoint data. Also, we can extend it to Microsoft Teams. With the SharePoint framework, we can use modern web technologies and tools in our preferred development environment. It could be Windows, Linux, or even Mac OS. And with this, we can build productive experiences and apps which are responsive and mobile ready. We can also use modern JavaScript web frameworks, tools, and libraries to build SPFX based solutions. So it could be with React.js, AngularJS, Vue.js, Knockout.js, or any else of your choice. SPFX works seamlessly on both online as well as on premises version of SharePoint. SharePoint Online supports the latest version of SPFX. On the other hand, SharePoint 2019 supports SPFX version 1.4.1 and SharePoint 2016 with feature pack 2 installed supports SPFX version 1.1.0. With this background, let's explore how Microsoft Teams extensibility with SharePoint framework works and what are the benefits? So the benefits of using SharePoint framework as a platform for building Microsoft Teams applications is like uh, we can have the development model which is similar to SharePoint framework web parts and any of the web parts can be exposed as a tab or personal app inside Microsoft Teams. SharePoint framework also offers different scoping options to expose SPFX web part as a custom tab or even personal app. With the release of SPFX version 1.11, it also supports to host our SPFX web part as a messaging extensions. So let's explore all of these options one by one. Firstly, let's see how we can build Teams tab with SPFX. So with the release of SharePoint framework version 1.8, Microsoft introduced the possibility to build tabs inside Microsoft Teams using SharePoint framework based solutions, which means any of your SharePoint framework solutions can now be easily ported to Microsoft Teams without any need for an external services and the values specified in the supported host property decides how user will be able to work with your web part. Secondly, we can also build Microsoft Teams personal app with SPFX. So as a part of SharePoint Framework 1.10, you can also publish your SPFX solution as Microsoft Teams personal app. A personal app in Microsoft Teams is an app that a user can install and then it can be accessed through the left rail of Microsoft Teams app. The recent addition of SPFX for Microsoft Teams is a messaging extension. With SharePoint Framework 1.11, it supports to host our SPFX web part as Microsoft Teams messaging extension. This offers more power to the developer so that they can now extend SPFX web part to Microsoft Teams as a messaging extension. So in this session, we are going to build a Planet Explorer. So we will develop a SharePoint Framework web part. We will call it as a Planet Explorer which help us to explore the planet information and later on we will add it to Microsoft Teams as a messaging extension. So as a basic setup, we will need a bot. So the bot will post data back to the conversation in Microsoft Teams from SPFX web part. Secondly, we will need Microsoft Azure web app to host this bot. Thirdly, we will need SPFX web part to develop our main logic. And lastly, we will need Microsoft Teams 
to host this entire solution. So let's get started with creation of a bot. So when we will create a bot, firstly we will need a bot channel registration. So let's go to our Azure portal and from here click create a resource and from here we will be able to search for bot channels registration. Once we are to the bot channels registration, we can specify the bot handle, the name for it, resource group, location where we want to host this, a pricing tier, and the major important factor here is a messaging endpoint because from here the bot will get served. So, for example, if you are using a bot for a local development and you are in a testing phase, you can specify the Engrok URL here. And once you have tested your application, you have tested your bot, you want to use it in a production environment, you can replace this messaging, messaging endpoint with uh, the web app th that we will create later on in this uh, session. So with that, once you create this bot channel registration, it will be available like this. So this is the bot channel registration that we have created with the name of Yo Teams Planet Bot. So to this, we will go to the settings. And in the setting, the major thing that we have is a messaging endpoint here, which we have specified to a web app application URL. And then we have something called as Microsoft App ID, which we should note it down for our future references. And from here, click on manage. And from there, we should create a new client secret. So once you click on new client secret, you can create it to expire in one year, two years or never expire. Once you create this client secret, note down the value because once you move out of this form, you will not be able to access that value. So we will note down all those values and with that we have our basic bot channel registration ready. Next thing is that we should create a channel for this in Microsoft Teams. So we have this channel created for Microsoft Teams. From here, the bot will be able to connect with Microsoft Teams. So we have our basic setup ready for the channel registration. Next thing is we will move to create the bot itself. So for this purpose, we will use your Teams. So the Yeoman generator for teams allows you to simply create and scaffold project with one or more Microsoft Teams features, maybe uh, bots, messaging extensions, tabs, connector, or even outgoing webhooks. So let's see how we can create those uh, Yo Teams based bot. So let me again uh, go back to my uh, development environment. We will open a command prompt and type Yo Teams. So with the your teams, we'll be able to create uh, bots, messaging extension, tabs, connector, outgoing webhooks. So we will name this solution as Planet Bot, the default name. We will use the current folder to place the files. And as a title of your bot project, we will just select it as a default Planet Bot. You can specify your company name or go ahead with the default selection. Here we will select the manifest version which we want to use for this solution. We will go ahead with the version 1.6. And if you have your Microsoft partner ID, you can specify it here. Otherwise, we can leave it as blank. So now we want to create a bot. For that purpose, we will select a bot, hit enter. And this is the place where we should specify where we want to host this solution. So this information will come from here. So this is the messaging endpoint where we will host. So for a time being, I will place this URL here. Once it is here, uh, we, we can choose whether to show the loading indicator, yes or no. We will specify it as yes. And then do we want to include the um, test framework? We will uh, maybe optionally say no. And then application insights again, we will say no. And then the 
thing is uh, we need to have a selection for any of the existing and running bot or if you want to create a new bot framework. So we will create the or choose the first option of already existing and running bot. And from here we should specify the ID of this particular bot, which is here, which is the Microsoft app ID. So I will copy it from here. We'll paste it here. And then do we want to add that stat bot as a static tab? Again, you can specify it. Yes or no. Doesn't matter. And we, we don't want this bot to have any kind of an um, support for a file upload. So we'll go ahead with the option of no. Once it is done, it will scaffold the entire project. And once the project is ready, the project will look like something like this one. So the major thing here is an environment file dot env. So once you open this environment file here, we will have the host name which we have specified while creation of the uh, bot solution. Then the next thing is this is the ID of our Microsoft Teams application, which is application ID. This is the package name that we have for our Microsoft Teams application. And then we should specify the app ID and app password for the bot framework. So which we can take from our portal. So this is the app ID which we can specify and then the client secret ID which we generated from here. We should specify both the values here. And for example, if you are using this bot for a local debugging, you can specify the port here and the bot is now ready with the basic configurations which are needed. The major part of or the major code of this bot lies in this file, your team's basic bot. So the file here uh, implements the actual logic of your bot. And then we have a method here called as on message event. So let us go to that method. So this particular on message event method contains uh, the logic to uh, evaluate the text from the user. And then we have uh, dialogues folder specified here, which contains the dialogues being used by this particular bot to respond to the user. We can also use adaptive card to send the messages back to the user. So in this dialogue, we have uh, uh, two uh, files which is planet.json and then uh, we, we have a file called as planet display card.json. So firstly, let's check the uh, planet.json. So this is the file where we are storing the planet related information. So we have values for ID, name, summary, which represents the information about each of the planet that we have. So this will act as a backbone for our planet informations and then secondly we have a json file called as planet display card so this is the display card which this bot will post to microsoft teams channel representing the information about a particular bot that has been selected by user again let's go back to our uh, bot implementation or bot code here we have a method called as handle teams messaging extension submit action so after receiving a notification the bot can process the retrieved data and post some information back to the microsoft team conversation so for this we are implementing this method so let's have a look at this method so here we are simply getting the information which is being sent by the user so in this case it will be the uh, planet which user has selected so firstly, we are loading all the planets that we have from the planet JSON file and then we are just simply selecting the planet which user has requested for. We are getting it by filtering out the uh, selection which user has made. And once we get that information, we are just calling context.send activity to send this adaptive card back to the Microsoft Teams channel. And for that, we have an implementation here called as get planet detail card, which will help us to create the dynamically uh, adaptive card and send back to the Microsoft Teams messaging extension as an adaptive card. 
So we are simply loading this JSON that we have, which represents an adaptive card uh, for the user. And then we are filling out the information to this adaptive card based on the planet that has been selected by the user. And then simply we are sending this information back to the Microsoft Teams channel as an adaptive card. So this, this is about the bot that we have implemented. The next thing is that now we should create an web app where we will host this bot. So let's go back to our Azure portal. Over here, we can create new resource and from here we can select a web app. So once we are here, we can select the options on how we want to host this bot, where we want to host the bot. Uh, only one thing is that for this runtime stack, we will select Node.js, maybe version 10.14, because our bot is created using your teams, which runs on top of Node.js. And once it is here, we will click create and uh, the bot uh, or the uh, app will look like something this. Again, we have uh, something called as a configuration in inside this uh, app. So in the configuration, we should specify the app ID from the bot and then the app password from the uh, bot channel that, that we have created. And then we should specify the idle timeout and the Node.js default version. Again, if we switch back to the uh, bot solution, we have something called as a readme file. So this file will help you to deploy your bot code to the web app. So we have a nice set of instructions here which we should follow for creating the local Git as a source for our uh, build provider. We should create one build and we should deploy from here by following these instructions to our web app. And once the instructions have been followed, only thing that we will have to uh, specifically specify in the configuration are app ID and the app password because those values will not come from your solution. So once we are done with that, uh, our bot is ready and functioning. Now let's go back to SharePoint framework solution. So for developing this solution, we will use SharePoint framework version 1.11. So whenever we are building web parts with SharePoint framework version 1.11, we can enable them to be exposed as Microsoft Teams tab, a personal tab or a messaging extension. So let's again go back to our development environment and uh, we will hit the command yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint to create our solution. So this will create an SPFX best web part. So for the solution name, we will go ahead with the default selection. We will use it for SharePoint online only purpose. We will use the current folder and then uh, we will set this option to yes so that this solution will be uh, available immediately to all of the sites. So we'll say yes here. Uh, we don't need any uh, specific web API access. So we'll specify no here. And then from the options available here, we will select web part and then we can uh, name the web part something like SPFX MS Teams extension and then we can optionally specify the description for this web part. We will choose react as a framework for this web part and then the scaffolding will go and uh, we will have our web part created something like this. So once the web part is created, I would like to pay your attention to this supported host. We, we haven't specified anything here for the messaging extension. We are simply relying on SharePoint web part. We haven't specified any extra values here. So the second thing is that uh, we will create a Teams folder or utilize this Teams folder and inside that we will have a manifest JSON file. So to expose your SharePoint framework web part as a messaging extension, you don't need to use any specific host in the uh, supported host property. Instead, all you need to do is to extend the Teams manifest in your SharePoint framework solution with something called as uh, Compose extensions. So here we have those Compose extensions and the key piece of information is the URL that we have here. Again, in the URL, uh, we, we have something called as a 
task info so in the task info we have this url specified and then the component id is the uh, id of our spfx web part that we have so here we have this component id specified as a guid which is our uh, sharepoint framework web part uh, id so this is the web part that should get exposed in the messaging extension so by specifying this value this web part will get exposed as an messaging extension inside microsoft teams so let's go to the code of uh, this messaging messaging extension so here we, we simply have uh, a render method where we are getting all of the planets from the json file and then we are rendering those uh, information in a document card which is a office ui fabric control and from here we are displaying all of the planets that we have in in our system the, the next thing is that uh, whenever your web part is exposed in microsoft teams as a messaging extension you, you might want to respond back to the user interaction for example by posting an adaptive card to the conversation so this requires using a task module and a bot so the task module notifies a bot of the event that user has triggered and the bot will post data back to the conversation so for that we have a method here called as planet clicked so firstly in this method we need to check if the web part is used as a messaging extension and then once you verify that the web part is used as a messaging extension you can use the task module to pass the data from the web part to the bot so from here we can do that functionality and then bot when receiving this notification the bot will process the retrieve data that is the planet name let me again go back to the bot code to explain it in a better way so here bot will get that information and after receiving that notification bot will process the retrieve data that is a planet name and then it will post the planet information to the conversation as an adaptive card so this is how uh, everything is uh, working uh, everything is uh, binded together so let's see how we can deploy this particular solution so in order to deploy this spfx web part as a messaging extension we'll have to uh, prepare spfx package so we can use uh, our regular commands gulp bundle dash dash ship and gulp package solution test dash ship so once we run this command we will have our uh, sp pkg file ready so let me go back to my spfx solution we will open the explorer and here it should create a sharepoint folder and a solution folder inside this we have sp pkg file and we can from here we will deploy this file to our uh, tenant level app catalog once it is done from sharepoint side we have done with our deployment the next thing is that we need to zip the teams folder and upload it to microsoft teams so again we will go back to our folder structure and here we have a teams folder so what we will do is we will zip these three files together we will call it as a planet explorer zip and then from here we will go back to our microsoft teams click apps and then we will click upload a custom app and upload for our tenant from here we will select this zip and we will click open so that this planet explorer will be available to us as a app inside microsoft teams so this is how it it will look when we will install so once we have installed this let us go to any of the team so we have a team here and a channel created so i will click new conversation down under here we have a symbol for planet planet explorer which is our messaging extension so once i click this this will open up our spfx web part which will show all of the planets that we have from our json file and once we click any of the uh, planet here it will send out this notification to our bot and once bot receives that in notification it will process that data that is the planet name that we have selected and it will post the planet information 
to the conversation as an adaptive card like this. Again, let, let's try with any of the other planet. I will click uh, this planet explorer from messaging extension. We will uh, select uh, maybe Venus this time. Again, it will send out that information to the bot. Bot will reply back with the planet information as an adaptive card, which will be shown here. So this is how we will be able to take advantage of uh, SharePoint framework web part that we have created to host as an Microsoft Teams messaging extension. So I hope this session is useful and thank you for watching.